If there's a quarterback that I'm really worried about, since we spent time on Minnesota, we could jump to the Lions here. I'm worried about Jared Goff. I, I don't, man, I first off, to, to just harp on the Lions, I love their wide receiver core right now. I'm a big fan of it. If DJ Chark is healthy, top that with Jameson Williams and, and then Sam Brown, bro, that, that's a legit core. And TJ. Dude, yeah, TJ. DeAndre Swift. Yeah. yeah, those two as well. Exactly. Oh, and you forgot. I think uh, Jameson Williams. No, I said James. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Jamal Williams. Bama. Jamal Williams is a pretty Jamal big Williams back for them for when as well. Swift, uh, Swift goes down. Yeah. yeah. So, so, but I'm, I'm looking at that, and that's a team that I'm like, man, they're a real quarterback away from having a really explosive offense. I don't think – I think Jared Goff is going to just hold them back a little bit. Mr. Perfect? He's, he's, huh? Mr. Perfect? Yeah, he's not. He's far from Mr. Perfect, so. I would I would just say about, right, the Lions. So when I was going over them, right, like I would just – without without looking at their team or whatever, if you ask me what do you think about the Lions, I would say, okay, they're, 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 ter- they're a bad team, all right? Like I'm not even worrying about the Lions. But when I actually look at their team, right, I say I like the players we just mentioned and Swift, Williams, uh, well, both Williams, I guess, uh, Jamison Williams and Jamal Williams, uh, St. Brown, DJ Chark, if he's healthy, right? And uh, we forgot TJ Hawkinson as a tight end, who I think is probably fifth or sixth top tight end in the league right now. Um, but I also really like that O-line. Decker at tackle, Joan at guard, Ragnow at center, and uh, their, I think, sixth overall pick last year in uh, Penny Sewell. I really uh, golf. Golf's not gonna, you know, be this elite quarterback or this great quarterback or really good. He's a he's a solid starting caliber quarterback, right? Mm -hmm. But if you want to take to the next level, like Justin said, he's not gonna get you there. You need somebody better. And I really like. I love the coach. I want to say that Dan Campbell. I love Dan Campbell. I love the energy, I love the passion, I love the intensity that he brings. You can feel that he loves this and wants this to succeed badly. So I'm rooting for him. I really, really am rooting for him. And I'm, I'm rooting for the Detroit Lions fan base because they have been dealt a bag of crap for however many years they've been a franchise. Um. And, and even just to touch on the defense a little bit, I mean, Aiden Hutchinson, second overall pick this year out of Michigan. That kid, he's got a lot of promise. So, you know, we'll see. Spear is the worry that I think of when I, when I hear Dan Campbell. You know, that, that, that intensity that he brings, I think it's huge for any young team. And you guys got a, a case in point with Jared Goff. He has moments, though. Like, there was one game last year where he was legitimately playing at the level of Aaron Rodgers. And then all came falling apart, all came crashing down the second half. But there are those moments, and you got to keep in mind last year, outside of Amon Ross St. Brown, he really didn't have those weapons. Mm. So now you add in two receivers. I know Jameson Williams, he got hurt in the national championship. He's probably not going to be available until, like, what, past midseason? But I say, DJ Chark, he's going to be coming in as well. You have all the weapons around him. You have the <clears> offensive <throat> line. Detroit is doing all the right things. And what I love most is the fact that they didn't take a quarterback this last year. They didn't take Malik Willis, who's an older prospect that's still a huge prospect or project at 23 years old. Mm -hmm. They're waiting a year. And I think for them, while they're going to be even more competitive this season, I had them winning six to seven games. There is a chance as well. They end up with a top five pick. They move up and they, they go after a Bryce Young or one of those young quarterbacks that can be their franchise guy. And maybe Jared Goff sticks around for a year. He rehabilitates his value as, you know, that stats gap backup slash, you know, veteran that's going to, you know, help the young quarterback get going. And then he can go somewhere else. Then you have that year with the veteran who's made two Pro Bowls. That means something. Probably as a replacement if I don't remember off the top of my head. Then the young guy, you continue adding more picks to that defensive unit. The offensive line is going to be one of the very best in the NFL. You have all these weapons I think there is that culture shift in Detroit and where it begins with is management and of course, Dan Campbell. I mean, it's, it's awesome. I want to see him succeed so badly. I mean, like if he fails, yeah. even as a Steeler fans, it's going to break my heart, but with the way they're, they're, they're trending, I have a hard time saying to myself, so long as they get this quarterback in the next two years, they're going to be fine. 
they're going to be in really good shape. And when you look at Aaron Rodgers' age, look at the Bears are about to crap on. Yeah, I say in three to four years, the Lions will be the team right in the north. This guy got the quarterback. I think that's the next step for them. And even with Jared Goff, you can make the playoffs. We've seen that. I think people are about too hard on the guy. You know, 2020, when he was doing with the thumb issue, people are thinking, oh, he's getting benched. I think kind of like Jimmy G, we, we give him a, a, a tough time. But, like, this is a legitimate starter. I don't think he's one of the five worst. He's better than all those young guys. I would mm. have him probably around 22, 21. I think he's better than Jimmy G. I think he's old, you know? And he's he's been to a Super Bowl. Sure, I mean, people are going to crap on him and all that. But, like, Todd Gurley falling apart, but I would attribute more to them collapsing versus New England than him. That's just my take. Now, do you guys have anything else to add before we go into Chicago? Okay, I want to make that quick and short. But no, oh, so I, I love the Lions, though. Like, I'm with you guys. I think uh, Motor City Dan Campbell is really just just changing how we look at the Detroit Lions. They play tougher, and, and he bring, he had some crazy quotes in the beginning of the year. <laughs> that I, I know he was getting scrutinized for it, but I, I loved every bit of it. So I, I, I watch the Lions right now, and much like I, I view my Knicks, um, they're a team that I feel like has direction. For the first time in a while, we're like, okay, oh, they're building something here. Something uh, to it's actually feel hard. optimistic about. Yeah, yeah. You, you could feel optimistic about the Detroit Lions. That now I could say, all right, I don't mind watching them this Thanksgiving. You know, and other, every other year I felt kind of forced to watch right. them. Now, now I'm kind of excited to see what this offense can be. So, yeah, I'm with you guys, man. Detroit is on the up and up. Third place team this year, but in the years to come, Aaron Rodgers, does, we don't know how long he he has left, and Kirk Cousins probably won't be the quarterback in Minnesota for too long. The those lines are coming, man. Motor City's on the rise.